Rahul Sharma, ED. After the initial comments from the management, we'll have the Q&A. Without any further delays, handing over the mic to the MD, sir. Oh, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me convey my gratitude and thanks to all the analysts for uh, participating in this uh, interactive session with the management. Uh, I would like to tell the highlights in brief because other things you have already seen from the presentation which we have uploaded. We have a decent business growth in Q2 FI23, especially in credit size, it is about 20%. And uh, deposits have grown by 9.82%, both above the industry average. And business has grown by 13.89%. In the last 12 months, we have added about roughly 2.4 trillion balance sheet to the existing outstanding. And now it stands at 19.58 trillion, the balance sheet size. Going forward, we are of the view that the growth momentum which we are observing will continue and we will be having a decent double digit growth. Coming to the credit side, especially retail credit, RAM which is about 55% and corporate is 45% as we have given the guidance that our credit portfolio will be 55% RAM, 45% corporate plus or minus 2%. So we maintain a RAM percentage of 55% and the RAM has grown at 16.4%. Retail has grown at 12.52%. Agriculture about 21%. MSME about 13% and corporate at 25%. Overall growth is at 20%. And uh, regarding the recovery under the present quarter, we have seen a very good recovery in the sense a cash recovery was about 1,876 crores plus a cash recovery of 1,205 crores in return of accounts. Getting recovery in return of accounts is one of the, I can say, a bit difficult task. However, my people have contacted the people, the, especially the return of uh, accounts and the borrowers, and uh, we could recover about 1,205 crores in the Q2 quarter FI23. Regarding the upgradation, again this quarter it was a bit attractive and it is about 1523 crores. Percentages wise, it was I think uh, a reasonably good work has been done. The gross NPA has come down from 8.42 to 6.37 and going forward we are hopeful that as we have given the guidance of 6% we will be achieving that. And net NP has come down from 3.21% to 2.19%. And as we have given the guidance, the net NPA will be less than 2% in a shorter period. We are very interested in increasing the provision coverage ratio. And it has increased from 82.44% to 85.36%. Credit cost, we have controlled at 1.31% and slippages were at 0.35%. Now coming to the main parameters. <coughs> regarding the income and also the expenditure. There is a decent interest growth, especially 20% especially in interest received on advances. And NII it has grown to 18.51%. And during the current quarter, it has grown by 9.57%. Expenditure, we have controlled and uh, we have invested a good amount this time in IT and also in infrastructure and uh, this will give going forward a good dividends and uh, the operating profit which was at 5600 in September 21 has increased to 6905 crores in September 22 showing a quarter on quarter growth of 4.5 percent and year on year growth of 23 percent net profit we are happy to share that the YYY growth is about 89% and Q on Q it is about 25%. So what we observe is there is a decent business growth, a very good recovery and also the ratios are very attractive and 
the capital has strengthened. The CRAR has increased from 14.37% to 16.51% and common equity from 10.09% it has increased to 11.14%. With this capital and also the deposit base, we are future ready to take a good credit growth which will ultimately lead to good income. Some key ratios I would like to share with you. ROA for the quarter, it is 0.79%. Our projections were 0.70 for March 23. And return on net worth, we have touched 18.86. And cost to income ratio, it is at 43.68, which is one of the lowest we are having. And earning per share, it is about 55.22. From 29.86 in September 21, now it is at 55.22. And then NIM, from 2.77, now it has been increased to 2.86. With all these good parameters, now our philosophy and aim is, whatever extra income and additional income we are earning, we want to pass on to our depositors because of which we have brought in a new deposit scheme that is triple six 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 by paying seven percent interest and for retirees it is 7.5 percent in the last 12 days there was a very good traction and more than eight lakh fixed deposits were open with a significant amount which will help the Canara bank in the current year, a current quarter and also the coming quarter to take care about the credit demand that is very much visible in Canara Bank. With these few observations, now it is open for question and answers. Over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Participants, I'll request you, if you want to raise, ask a question, please raise your hands. And if you are calling from a dial-in number, please press star 3 to ask a question. Yes, uh, there is a call-in user who has a question. I have, uh, please unmute yourself and ask a question. A question is from the line of Ms. Mona Khetan. Please unmute yourself and ask. Hi, sir. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Good evening and thanks for taking up my question. Uh, so the first query is on uh, restructured book. Uh, where would the uh, aggregate book uh, stand today? Uh, ma'am, regarding the restructured book, that is resolution framework one and resolution framework two, which we have not given in this one because now it is the history. However, I will share the details with you. In resolution framework 2, the slippages were 13%, 1-3, and remaining is performing. Okay, which is this quarter or, or cumulatively? Cumulative, ma'am. It is cumulative. Okay, and where does the book stand if I have to include the MSME it, it restructuring is, outside is, and then, yeah. It is at 20,000 crores. Okay. Earlier it was okay. 24,000 crores. There is recovery of about 3,000 crores. Now it has come down to 20,000 crores. Okay. Actually, last quarter you had mentioned about 18,000 crores. So it was not reconciling with this 20,000 mentioned in the notes to accounts. So uh, uh, what exactly happened in between? Isn't the MSME 5,000 crores? Ma'am, earlier we have included all the sectors and that was the figure now we are showing about the rf2 which i am telling okay okay this is just resolution framework 2 yes uh, but if we include all the sectors where would the number yes stand? yes eligible under rf2 okay uh, okay sir uh, and can we have the breakup of your slippages Yes, slippages were 3,500 crores, out of which 1,200 crores is EGRI, 1,300 crores is MSME, 600 crores is retail, 
rest is miscellaneous. 400 crores is miscellaneous. Okay. And just finally, uh, if we look at your intra NPA, it's uh, declined by about 1600 crore uh, on a Q on Q basis. So, is there some large recovery or what exactly has happened there? Uh, infra, uh, the NPA now it has come down to 6.79%. The amount is because of repayment in regular accounts as well as in NPA accounts also in various accounts. Okay, okay. Sure. And just finally, uh, where would our uh, ECLGS book lie? Uh, as on date, yeah. GCL book. What is the figure? One minute, I'll share with you. We have disbursed about 18,000 crores and sanctions were about 19,000 crores. This is the amount which we have disbursed and sanctioned under ECLGS as on 30th September 22. Okay. And uh, what sort of slippages have we seen from this portfolio? Out of this, out of this 669 crores is the slippages. Out of sanctions of 19,000 and disbursement of 18,500, slippages is 669. Short. Sure. That okay. is around Thank 3 to 4 percent. 3 to 4 percent. Got it. Well, thank you so much. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Participants, if you wish to ask a question, please do so by pressing the raise hand button on your touchstone application. Uh, the next question is from the line of Mr. Deepak. So please unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes sir. Please, please, Deepak ji. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you very much uh, sir, for the opportunity. So, I just wanted to understand, uh, now in, the, in your opening remark, uh, you mentioned about, uh, uh, I mean, the good credit growth demand visible, right? Uh, the, uh, and this extra deposit that uh, you are taking uh, through fixed deposit will help, help you meet that uh, credit growth demand. And as such, we are already at about 20% growth. So, so, I just wanted to understand annually we are still kind of looking at 8% growth. So, there's a big disconnect So uh, between what we are achieving and what we are kind of uh, suggesting. So, 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 any comment from that would be quite helpful. Yeah. Uh, regarding the projections which we have given in the beginning of the year, 8% credit growth, that is considering that there will be a one COVID wave or there will be recession. All those uh, factors taking into consideration, we have given 8%. However, such things have not happened and there is a very good climate for credit growth. So, we could achieve 20% and 20% is a very decent growth. We are confident that there will be a decent double digit growth, which is more than 8%. Now, coming to the funds which we are raising for the onward lending, as we said, our target is to maintain RAM 55%, corporate 45%. In RAM, you have already seen a growth of 16.4%, which includes retail, agri, MSME and others, except corporate. This growth, we expect that during the current quarter will continue. So, for that, we require funds. And Going forward, we are of the view that because of the liquidity situation in the market, the deposit rates are bound to rise. If you are first in the market, you get the advantage. With the amount which we have mobilized, that is more than 8 lakh FDRs, we are in a comfortable position to take care about the decent double digit credit growth that is going to be there in the current quarter and the coming quarters. Coming to the corporate, 45% of my loan book. Corporate, nowadays we are seeing lot of inquiries and 
lot of draws also we are seeing, especially in infra, especially in NBFCs, in petroleum, coal products, and also in chemical, and to some extent iron and steel, and also food processing. So we observe that during the current quarter, there will be a good demand from corporates also. So our aim is always to be ready for the future and to have a strong balance sheet. Oh, fair enough. And, and, and so just to follow up, uh, you mentioned decent double digit credit growth. So a 15-20% is what uh, the range that we are looking at? Uh, see, I said decent double digit growth. When I say 8%, uh, we have achieved 20% growth. Yeah. So when I say a decent double digit growth, you can understand. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Yep, that's it from my side. All the very best, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Ashok. So please unmute yourself and go ahead. Mr. Ashok. Mr. Ashok, are you there? Okay, we'll move to the next question. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Prakash. So please unmute yourself and go ahead. Mr. Prakash. Am I audible? Yes, you are, sir. Yeah, uh, please. First of all, uh, like a uh, uh, very good congratulation for the hefty numbers, for the good numbers shown in this quarter. Uh, Thank you, sir. I have a few questions. One is that I remember last time you mentioned that it, uh, that uh, because of the RBI change of repo rate, which you affected only from 7 July onwards, so there is going to be some additional interest in over 250 crores. So in this quarter, when I calculate the NII, simple NII, uh, like uh, interest issued minus interest expended, in June quarter it was 1558 crores, and in September quarter it was 1986 crores. So, which means in, uh, increased by about 428 crores. So, can I presume that out of 428 crores, 250 crore odd were because of the uh, 50 basis point uh, increase, uh, which was given in the floating rate uh, uh, account from effective from 7th of July. So, it means in the next quarter, which is December quarter, we won't see such increase of 428 crore in the NII. Uh, here, let me answer in a different way. See, this time the NI was at 7,434. Again, you all know that this is based on the cost of deposits and also yield and advances. 250 crores or 200 crores which we received because of a repo increase is factored in. And that 250 will continue this quarter also because it is already inbuilt. Not only that, Apart from that, in the hardening interest rates, we increase the spread also mm -hmm. and also the interest income from other than RLLR also. For example, MCLR. MCLR we have increased. MCLR is also contributing. Apart from that, in the normal course, corporate advances also we have increased the rate. So the estimation that only 250 crores out of 400 crores is there which will not be available will not be true in the coming future. It may be a part of that, but there will be further resources and avenues because of which we are targeting to have a good NII. Okay, sir. Yes, sir, like this second thing, uh, our provision for uh, NPA, it is hovering around 2600 crore to 2700 crore. Do you see it coming down in the coming quarter or it will hover around same, uh, same uh, similar range? Uh, I will not comment about the figure, but I will uh, share with you our principle. Our principle is, if you have followed me in the last two years, I have always said that I want to have a healthy PCR and also my balance sheet should be ready for the future. In the sense, uh, proactively we, have to, we want to make more provisions. As you know, in big accounts where 15% provision is required, Kendra Bank has made 100% provision. So basically, if you see the provision of 2700 crores of this one, 
So there are accounts where we have aggressively made provision and we continue to do that. Good, sir. And sir, like my last question, employee cost has come down by 300 crores as compared to previous quarter. So what is the reason for this or whether the uh, the number of uh, 3119 crore for this quarter will continue in the ensuing quarter also? Uh, sir, here actually there are two, three points which I would like to share with you. Canara Bank is one big bank which is paying a PLI to its employees in the last two years, 15 days. That is full PLI. And in the Q1, PLI amount is there, which will be paid again in the next Q1 of the next financial, next uh, uh, FI24. Whereas that PLI is not there during the current quarter because of which there is a difference in the staff cost. Second point is, seniors are retiring and they, their cost is being uh, reduced and even if we recruit new people the yes. cost is very less yes sir yes so you are going right, sir. forward yes sir going forward staff cost will be moderate whereas since kendra bank is making good profits we want to give maximum benefits to our staff to that extent the amount may be increased but it will not be significant mm -hmm. Very good, sir. Very good, sir. All the best, sir. I'll come back in the queue, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'll request participants to please keep their questions to do. There's a long queue. Uh, next question is from the line of Mr. Bhavik Shah. Sir, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Sir, congrats Hello. on a very good set of numbers. Thank you very much. Uh, sir, uh, firstly, sir, I just wanted to understand uh, how is the liquidity situation with the bank? Uh, what would be the excess liquidity in rupees, uh, crore, and how much would be the LCR as on date? Uh, let me share you the LCR number. LCR number is always an average number of 90 days. It is 122%. RBI requirement is 100%. So, as far as liquidity is concerned, Kendra Bank is maintaining very well the liquidity position, neither surplus nor deficit, because we want to deploy the funds effectively. Now coming to the liquidity position, as on date, Kendra Bank is not having any liquidity problem because, as you know, we have floated one uh, deposit scheme, 666, where more than 8 lakh deposits were opened, including 666 with huge amount. So for Canada Bank, resources or liquidity is not going to be a problem in the current quarter and the coming quarter. Uh, okay. So taking that a little further, so given we are paying uh, higher on uh, fixed deposits compared to other SOE banks, uh, sir, how do you, uh, what would be the outlook of margins uh, in the next three, four quarters? Uh, because of repricing, uh, uh, can we expect a similar kind of delta over the next two, three quarters? See, our guidance regarding NIM is 2.90. Today we are at 2.86. So we will be achieving 2.90. Now, for example, if you see my interest earned and OP, it has increased tremendously. Now, as a management, I have two points to answer. One is whether to continue with this abnormal OP without passing any benefit to my depositors or to share some of this to my depositors. I have a depositor base of more than 10 crores and my depositors are very loyal to Kendra Bank. So, during the time of high inflation, we thought that we have to pass on some benefit to the depositors. This is the main reason because of which we have pa we are passing on a 50 basis points more than the market to my depositors. But I am making good money in advances also because my interest income and advances is growing with 20%. Okay. And I am getting non-interest income also at 13 to 14%. Fee-based income I am getting at 18%. It is 1,700 crores plus. So, our aim is 
pass on some benefit to the depositors they will be with you for life long that is a concept along with maintaining the margin this is the philosophy on which we are working and it is working well understood sir thank you sir uh, lastly only a couple of data keeping questions sir uh, sir uh, last quarter a restructured book was 18000 crores on similar like to like basis uh, what would be this quarter please mujumdar ji sir uh, for rf1 our present liability is around 4420 crore for rf2 it is 12089 crore so both put together is around 16000 crore uh, okay and uh, msme would it would it we get added to this uh, and yes uh, msme we have another that is otr of that old is another 2300 crores so total would be uh, 18300 crores sir has it increased exactly. quarter on quarter no 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 it has only come down uh, quarter on quarter oh so uh, since the last quarter as an 18000 was a number so i'm not sure if 18300 is comparable to 18000 No, no. You must be last. We what you are comparing? Maybe last quarter we told of RF one, RF two. This okay. is not MSME OT, OTR we spoke of. Last quarter the figure that you have is of only RF one and RF two, which has come down to sixteen thousand crores. Clear, sir. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, and sir, what would be the slippages from restructured book this quarter? Uh, uh, RF one the slippage is if you take out the future uh, that future was also sir sir RF one it is about three uh, percent excluding future okay. RF two it is thirteen percent one three thirteen percent and it is cumulative not during the quarter it is a cumulative one uh, understood sir oh uh, sir that's it from my side so good luck. and thank you thank you thank you sir our next question is from the line of mr prana so please unmute yourself and go ahead hi can you hear me yes please uh, yes yes sir so, so 2300 crore is uh, crore is msme then there is a 16000 crore rf1 plus rf2 so total is 18000 crores around and out of this 3% is slipped from the number rf1 and 13% from rf2 right yeah Right. Yes, sir. And sir, sir, about that, uh, 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 SR, SR, that is, we uh, uh, receive security receipts will be around two thousand five hundred crores. Is that right? Y- yes, sir. Right, right. So, out of the, uh, this two thousand five hundred, is there any outstanding provision? Uh, we have almost fully provided, and I think only a few hundred crores are left to be provided. Right. Right. Perfect, sir. Sir, uh, can you just uh, uh, spend some time on actually uh, giving some color on loan growth? What which sectors they are coming? Is it retail? Is it corporate, SME, MSME? And will it continue? Is it capex related? Is it consumption related? Is it working capital related? Any color will be really helpful. Thanks a lot, sir. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, our principle is. we want to maintain a ratio of 55% under ram and 45% under corporate plus or minus 2% so during the current quarter our ram is about 55% which is growing at 16.4% now let me discuss uh, regarding the ram we say ram means retail agriculture and msme retail it is growing at 12.5% and within the retail housing is growing at 17% and we are hopeful that the growth in housing will continue to be a decent double digit growth agriculture and allied activities were growing at 21% and this will be around this percentage next quarter also msme is at 13% since msme we are seeing lot of demand so this 13% to 14 to 15% we think it will be continuing so put together again under ram category the growth will be about 16 to 17 to 18% which will be a decent growth so 55% of my portfolio will be growing at a decent double digit growth now coming to corporate 
In corporate, we have seen traction and a very good growth in infrastructure, NBFCs, then iron and steel, then we have seen in petroleum, coal products, and a bit in construction, and also chemicals and chemical products. During the current quarter also, we are hoping that these sectors will be doing good and the growth momentum will be sustainable. So overall the growth we see, it will be a decent double digit growth for Kendra Bank. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, just Thank would you, like sir. to remind Mr. Pranav, could you please stop sharing your presentation because I think you are sharing a presentation. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Anand Dhamma. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. So, first question is on your overseas credit book. And uh, that's where we are uh, seeing a lot of growth uh, across public sector banks and so for us. So, what are the key reasons why we're seeing this growth apart from my agree that it's rookie depreciation? Uh, let me tell you, in the last 12 months, the credit book has gone by 1.4 lakh crores, bank as a whole. In overseas, it has grown by just 21,000 crores. Percentage-wise, it looks big. But amount-wise, since the base is very small, percentage is appears to be 85 percent. However, in terms of real amount, it is only 21,000 crores. So in 1.4 lakh crores, 21,000 crores overseas, we feel it is a normal growth. And this growth is coming from A, AA and AAA rated accounts and also very good corporates who are in India and abroad. So, but then what made them borrow now or what made you lend them now that basically were not doing uh, a year back as such? In this uh, overseas borrowing, there are borrowing by the banks also. Some foreign banks and also Indian housing finance company also, which from is a well-rated company. From overseas uh, yes. Uh, branches? Okay. Yes. And why would they do that? So, it's basically ECB funding that we're doing? Yes, exactly, sir. So, how much would be ECB and how much would be bias credit that uh, of the overseas book that we would have grown? Most of the portion is lending, not buyer's credit. Okay, okay. So, secondly, uh, uh, we have moved to the new tax regime during the current quarter. Uh, uh, so basically, how have we done the tax, I mean, DT adjustment? Uh, so we have knocked off the DTA from the asset book, but is there a net worth adjustment also that we need to do one? And uh, what is the uh, uh, tax rate that we should expect for the full year now going forward? Whether it will be 25% or it will be still less than 25%? Yeah, we'll tell you. Yes, Mr. Mujumdar, our CFO will be replying this uh, question. Sir, uh, first question, your first question is how we have adjusted this, that is funded this to uh, DTA, that is around 2,451 crore which we have told. It is out of ad excess ta tax provision that we have made last year and first quarter of the present year. So it has been funded out of that, so it has not hit my present uh, profit and loss account. It has not hit my profit at all. But it Coming would to, get knocked off from a net worth, right? No, it, it has your DTA, reduc DTA reduction means my uh, capital base goes up, my uh, CET1 goes up, uh, my uh, CRAR goes up. That has gone up by almost 40 basis point each. That I agree, but sir, from your net worth, it should get uh, adjusted, right? Because no, if you're no, saying that. Get adjust no, no, sir, it will only reduce my net worth if it yeah. is a charge on my yeah. profit. It is a charge on my profit which has been funded out of tax provision, additional tax provision more than requirement which I had made last year and the first quarter of the present year which has neutralized it. 
I'm, I'm, I'll explain you, but if you want to know a bit more, last year I had an ad unadjusted accumulated loss of around 18,000 crore. So oh, technically yeah. I need not pay any tax last year, but I made a tax provision of around 1500 crore plus last year. And this year when I started the year, I had a net uh, that, uh, accumulated loss of around 8000 crore. So this year also up to this September, I need not pay any tax, but still in the first quarter, I made a provision of around 900 crores. So the which was adequate for me to fund this DTA. So that is the reason my profit and loss is not hit, which you said that my net worth would have been eroded by that type by that amount is not eroded between it was already funded. Okay, uh, so, so what's the tax rate that we should expect for the full year? Here, here let me, sir, let we me will, add something. We will move to 25% from 35%, 34.9%. Yeah, that's more. Here, let me add something, sir. Tax this, per, this particular uh, migration from higher tax to lower tax, we are working for the last one and a half years. It is uh, not uh, today we have taken the decision. For this, in order to avoid uh, the hit, or the reduction in the net worth. We have made excess provision in the last year itself for the tax. And also in the first quarter of this financial year, knowing very well that this money will be required when we migrate to the lower tax regime. It is a well calculated move which is paying dividend today. Sir, I understand the tax balance sheet adjustment, but how does that affect basically the accounting part of it? So you have knocked off from the assets, the DTA on the liability side also, there should have been some adjustment to that amount. So whether it was sitting into other liabilities, some provisions that you would have made? No, 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 no. That, that provision of tax uh, of equal amount has been uh, reversed. Okay. So I'll take it offline. Uh, uh, yeah, please. So another, yeah, yeah, another question yeah, was about... Sir, so would the question to please come back in queue? Yeah. Uh, sure, sure. I'll come back to that. Thank you, sir. Yeah, please. Please. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Sakit Kapoor. So please unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah, Namaskar, sir, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. Namaskar, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, I will just club out, club uh, bunch my questions uh, in the proximity of time, sir. Firstly, sir, uh, our EPS for H1 has been 27 rupees, and if uh, correct me, sir, we were guided 40 rupees for the full year. So can can we expect uh, an upward guidance uh, since you are? Uh, since the likelihood of uh, breaching 40A should, should be by the next quarter itself, if uh, barring unforeseen circumstances, my first point. And secondly, sir, how have uh, the hardening of this GSEC rate, uh, the government securities, uh, the 10 year on benchmark have affected our tre uh, treasury portfolio? And going ahead, sir, uh, if you could give us the trajectory of how the NIA, NIMs are going to shape up. And then I have one more follow up, sir. Please, sir, answer. Thank sir. you. Sir, regarding our first question, EPS, today we are already at 55.22. We have already crossed 40, which we have given the guidance. And we are hopeful that this will be improving further, going forward. So that 40 is now history. Now regarding the NII, the momentum which we are observing will be maintained going forward. Because the way in which we are seeing the demand for the credit and also from the good corporates who are ready to afford a bit higher rate of interest. So NAI we are going to maintain. There will not be an issue regarding the NAI. Regarding the treasury, yes. As you know, in Q1, we made good money in Treasury because of the proactive actions taken by my treasury, treasury. This quarter, we did not have much impact regarding the depreciation on our Treasury income. However, the Treasury income is a bit less because of the existing conditions. Next quarter, we are hopeful that the situation will improve and we will be in a position to make some money from the Treasury also. However, we don't see any depreciation as far as the portfolio is concerned. At the most, there may be a depreciation of 200 to 300 crores, which is very negligible as far as my balance sheet is concerned. 
सर ऑन द ईपीएस फ्रंट आर यू एनालाइजिंग द फर्स्ट हाफ नंबर सर because there are if you look at you the two eps one is quarter wise it is 55.22 and for cumulative for six months it is 50.27 okay okay so correct me here sir when i look at your uh, reporting numbers we find the eps at consolidated for this uh, first half at 27 rupees 26 rupees 93 paisa so where are we getting this 52 rupees number sir i am referring to page number 4 of the slide it is on uh, we have given on page number 21 eps annualized uh, so you are annualizing the first half numbers that is what i am asking sir uh, uh, yeah okay yes uh, because uh, because the performance may vary to, sir we can, if the per performance uh, may vary uh, also sir it is is it going to be a granular a granular num numbers going ahead also sir can we look forward for that uh, see our uh, only commitment is we want to do better than what we did earlier that is the only target for us correct sir last point is on the sir uh, what portion of our portfolio the loan book is on uh, floating rate and how much is on the fixed rate part so with the increase in the repo rate how is the incremental uh, and nims are uh, incremental in interest margin is going to be and your guidance on the net interest margin is shaping ahead in percentage terms uh as on date we don't have any advances on fixed rate all are floating rate 100% book is on floating yes and okay, uh, so then ah, sir so okay, i guess i would request you to the, please come back in queue yes sir i am in the coming in the queue only i am listening to what yeah, yeah. and then i'll come and I'll and, come. Uh, and uh, i can only say that whatever ratios we have given this time next time we will try to better those ratios Thank you, sir. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Ashok. Please unmute yourself and go ahead. Sir, yeah, I think you had given me this opportunity earlier also, but there were some sir. technical glitch. Uh, sir, could not please. hear me, and I could not hear him. Now, please, uh, sir, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. A uh, uh, lot of the queries and questions have been answered by you, a uh, very calmly and uh, with a great reassurance. Uh, I have just. Uh, uh one um, you know the recent uh, development with the by the rbi on the rating agencies you know giving guidance them to rate the corporates especially the large accounts uh, with the names of the banks uh, you know for which this limit is being rated uh, sir have you have you gone through that uh, and uh, uh, whether uh, can i can i seek some clarifications on that from you that how is how is it going to be impacted <laughs> uh see we have come across this one and still we are also i can say studying because the time is there and uh, for further clarifications uh, i have my cgm risk so, who sir, handles the rating uh, he will be responding this please uh, mr rao so sir my question is basically that uh, you know the most of the time when the loan is at the sanction stage that time the ratings uh, have been called for i mean the previous rating or rating of the company by that time it is not clear that which bank is going to sanction the loan out of the various banks uh, where the loans are applied so generally the rating is for a for an amount that this is the amount which we are seeking this is the amount which we are going to seek say 1000 crore 2000 crore that time the names of the banks may or may not have been known only the existing banks who have given the credit their names can be given but not the bank which is assessing the proposal you are perfectly correct that's why sir still there is time so we are also working and uh, discussing internally and we will be giving the feedback okay sir uh, so we'll wait Thank for you, the sir. clarification from you the yeah. bank also and the rbi also sir my second observation and some some uh, uh, answer from you uh, that we have very large uh, you know number of subsidiaries and associate i think uh, we have eight subsidiary and five associates and lot of money have been has been invested in those subsidiary and that whereas when you see the operating profit the console profit it just 75 80 crore rupees more than your stand alone profit and if you look at the net profit it's again the same you know like kind of this so so ultimately at the end of the day 
are we just banking on the valuations of these companies or their products and uh, this thing or we do we want to bring in something in our profit and loss account in our balance sheet also ah uh, very good uh, question uh, let me tell you for example canfin homes they are doing very good profit op and np and uh, going forward we are confident that this particular subsidiary or associate is going to perform very well now coming to kendra hsbc we are seeing a very good traction in kendra hsbc as far as the business is concerned and uh, going forward its valuations are going to be very good when they come out with for ipo kendra robeco is another best mutual fund in india which is giving good returns and uh, excellently managed so these are all the jewels for kendra bank today profit in terms of comparison to parent kendra bank may be less but going forward these companies or subsidiaries are going to give huge returns that is why we are not selling the stake in these companies and regarding gramine banks i have four for example andhra pradesh gramine bank it started making 326 crores profit and same way i have other gramine banks like kerala gramine bank it is making 129 crores profit so going forward these things are going to give huge dividends to kendra bank okay thank you sir our next question is thank from you, the sir. line of miss marook please unmute yourself and go ahead yeah hello sir congratulations thank you ma'am yes sir so i had just uh, a couple of questions so firstly uh, i just wanted to uh, firstly on your you said that you would better all your parameters try to better all your parameters next quarter uh, how do you view your margins because you also said that you have to pass on something to depositors too so that they stay loyal to you so how do you view your margin going ahead do you think they a uh, peak here or there is scope for improvement given mclr repricing what's your view on margins in the next 1 to 2 quarters uh ma'am regarding margins going forward the margins are going to increase as we said nim our guidance is 2.90 today we are at 2.86 so margins will increase and the thing which i have said that we have to pass on some benefit to the depositors that will help the bank in the long run to improve the margins see there is a demand for the deposits in the market because we don't see the liquidity which was available 4 months ago 5 months ago today under this scenario and also taking into consideration the present inflation which is there it is justifiable and also required that you should pay interest which will help the depositors to take care about the inflation and also to continue with kendra bank and regarding the margins now the lending is being done at a higher rate and people are ready to take well rated companies so for kendra bank margin will not be a issue the outcome will be my depositors will be happy they continue to bank with me and also deposit money in my bank it will ultimately lead to very good liquidity position for kendra bank which i will be deploying in the credit as you have seen during the current quarter yyo growth is about 20% to maintain a decent double digit growth you need resources deposits and for that you have to pay a bit more also got it so very well explained and so i just have one more question delving a bit more into what anand dama was asking so you know this question on international loans and where they have been lent keeps coming up because what has happened is it's a coincidence that all psu banks have started showing growth in international loans at the same time so there's no lead lag or any such thing so except baroda which was anyway 
strong in international loans everyone has upped their lending just in the last 2 to 3 quarters part of it will be exchange depreciation but if you could have a rough breakdown on how much growth has come through exchange how much is to overseas banks that we talked about and how much is to overseas corporates and how much is to indian corporates so you know any such broad classification uh ma'am if you see the increase in figure in overseas it is only 21000 crores which is not a big amount and this 21000 crores 4 to 5000 crores has gone to the banks we have financed to the banks and remaining is for well reputed high rated corporates got so and these are international so, banks yes and one indian housing finance bank is also there got it okay thank you ma'am thank you our next question is from the line of mr rushab indikar please unmute yourself and go ahead uh hi sir congratulations for the uh, good numbers yeah uh, so uh, yeah sir uh, uh, considering the increase in deposit rates and uh, the triple uh, 6 scheme that we, that have come up uh what is the expected growth in deposits for next four uh, three to four quarters uh i can say next to two quarters next two quarters there will be a decent deposit growth of double digits okay and and the deposits as i said in the last 12 days we have mobilized more than 8 lakh fixed deposits Right. which are going to stay with kendra bank and these are all retail deposits uh regarding the deposits just i was explaining it got disconnected so we are going to see a decent double digit growth in deposits also mm -hmm. in the current quarter that is q3 fi 23 and also q4 fi 23 because we have already mobilized more than 8 lakh fixed deposits from various customers which are all retail so this money is going to stay with kendra bank so there will be a very decent deposit growth uh, and uh, uh, this additional uh, deposit so that we are uh, uh, taking in the cost of those deposits are uh, typically less than the borrowing so is it higher uh, just wanted to understand we are always conscious about the margin to be earned mm -hmm. so always we lend at a rate uh, taking into consideration our margins also and the 7% is only for 666 whereas for other deposits it is 2.5 3.5 4 five different rates are there so it's not that all the deposits are at 666 666 actually it has created a wave in the market that deposit money in kendra bank got it okay uh, and sir lastly uh, wanted to understand uh, uh, as you mentioned uh, the entire uh, advances book of uh, canara bank is uh, uh, floating so just wanted to confirm if uh, even the uh, commercial uh, advances are floating or only the retail advances uh, we were talking about no all advances okay except fdr fixed deposit against which fixed deposit we give all other are either any of the floating rates only no fixed rates we have given okay sir thank you sir thank you thank sir thank you sir our next question is from the line of mr jay mundra please unmute yourself and go ahead yeah hi sir uh, good evening and thanks for the opportunity uh, good evening sir good evening sir sir uh, a uh, uh, our nims guidance of 2.9% is it for fy23 or this is like exit quarter fy23 i mean fourth quarter so it is for f march 31st march 23 for the full year full year right um, and sir the capital number that we have shown uh, this includes the interim uh, first half pat number right yes yes right excluding 20% excluding 20% right which is okay and then the sir if you can share the slippages break up uh, for this quarter uh, of around 9 sir out of out of this 3500 1200 is under agriculture small ticket loans 1300 is under msme 600 is under retail 
and left over 400 is other accounts right and last question sir is there any one off in the net interest income line item because um, while you have clearly shown a very huge uh, loan growth the interest on advances have also gone up uh, significantly so is there any one off or you know any any npa recovery which is also coming in interest uh, advances line or this is like business as usual no sir this is all the growth in credit and also the increase in interest rates which you have implemented in the last uh, three months that has given this uh, increase in interest income which is about 20 percent yoy no one of instance right sir and if you can sir we used to share the sma one and two at overall bank level and the reason i'm asking sir if in this quarter also large part of the slippages have come from you know below five crore accounts right so if you can help us with the yes. sma we'll, one plus we'll, two we'll share number. with you sir sure uh, yeah we'll sir it, that sir. is yeah well, thank you so much sir all the best thank you sir thank you sir with the keeping in mind the time uh, we like this was the last question uh, we'll hand over the mic to md sir for his last closing comments uh, first of all from kenra bank side and from the management side we thank the investors and also the analysts uh, who are very cooperative to kenra bank and bringing out the actual position in the market second one is uh, as we committed that each and every staff in kendra bank is committed to the bank and the growth momentum will continue in the coming quarters also and the growth is not in one sector or in one region it is spread over on uh, agriculture msme retail corporate all those things so we are of the strong opinion and confidence that uh, the growth will continue in the current quarter also with these words i thank one and all thank you sir on on behalf of antique stock broking and canara bank i thank all the participants for joining the call have a good evening everyone bye thank you very much